While the Pixel 7 Pro may look a lot like the 6 Pro, it does have more camera tweaks than expected this year. Not a total overhaul, but maybe enough to warrant a Pro label perhaps. We do keep the same main sensor as last year, but have a wider ultra wide and a 5x optical zoom up from the previous 4x. There's plenty of software tweaks too, but the main feature I like was the 2 and 10 zoom options using shenanigans to allegedly give close to optical quality zoom. So let's jump right into some samples. I won't linger too long on the standard shots. Overall quality looks pretty similar as expected, but we can already see a significant difference in the colors of the two images, with the 7 tending to look a bit cooler, with the 6 looking a bit more vibrant. Onto the 2x zoom, which is where I was most intrigued. Already we can see the 7 capturing sharper images with more defined edges and much more detail. With Cora, the algorithm used by the 6 has given her fair an oil painting look, but the 7, while not sharp, does look decent. The 7 finds the edges better and appear less blurry. This is even more pronounced when motion is introduced. The 6 also feels like it takes away a lot of the depth of the image, making things look rather flat. Moving into the 4x range, as expected, the 6 captures the better shots as it's now using the optical lens compared to the 7's software guesses. Basically, anything textured will be smoothed over a bit too much on the 7. This changes as we move into the 5x range as now the 7 uses its own optical lens. The 6 is still serviceable, but the 7 snaps offer better detail and crisper edges, generally. My guess for this shot and the blurry textures is the 7 is probably not using the optical lens and may have gotten stuck at 4.9x. I did find the dial a little finicky when trying to set it just right. 10x is another range where Google claims near optical quality and while the colours are more muted on the 7, at least everything doesn't look like a Van Gogh painting. Small text is also much clearer, but I can still make it out on both shots. Sometimes you do get a rather difference in quality, but sometimes Google just thinks the grass is actually the focus. Jumping to 20x, and both images are pretty average, with the 6 of course being even oilier. You can still make out our text captured on the 7, but you'd mostly be guessing on the 6. Here the 7 actually keeps the texture of the scratching post, and generally keeps better edges than the 6. The final zoom level is 30 which the 6 isn't capable of. The quality is kind of what I'd expect, but I'm mostly surprised that the text is somewhat legible. Note that while things look pretty average up close, images are still serviceable when taken as a whole. Macro shots are another new feature, which leverages the ultra wide to allow you to get nice and close. There's no toggle, just a yellow flower when you're close enough, which can be a pain for moving targets. It's a nice feature to have, but it's still not a super close up, and the Pixel 6 can get a similar shot by using the 2x zoom. Using the macro will give less background blur and more detail though, so it depends what kind of shot you're going for. Night mode got a slight enhancement, letting you get the shots in a shorter time frame. The 7 adds a timing option, so you can go the full 6 seconds in darker environments if you want. Even at a 3 second capture though, Images were generally on par with the 6. Even as you zoom in, the quality stayed consistent, but both did get noisier. At 10x, the 6 was able to light the shot better, but if you bump that capture time up to 6 seconds, the 7 pulls ahead again. The new ultra wide is even better at capturing stuff you're standing too close to. Typical with ultra wides, like the plant on the left, some images can look a bit weird. This shot nicely shows how much you can capture without taking a step back into traffic. Video is something I won't fully appreciate until I spend enough time using it over many different situations, but for initial impressions, shots in good light look very similar but with the 7 bringing over its cooler colour profile. With average lighting, things are still similar, 
but the six shows a touch more noise, notable on the walls. Going down to poor lighting and the six is much grainier than the seven, with the color profile making the seven look a little brighter too. We do have the new cinematic mode too, but as it's limited to 1080p at 24 frames, it's not worth my attention yet. Finally, the selfie camera got an upgrade, but I don't think I take enough selfies to notice. Portrait mode is doing a pretty decent job, both struggling a little with the beard. Notable here is the 6 thought Cora was a background object, where the 7 realised she was the star. Even with her coming in front of me, it stayed confused. And that's generally it. A surprising number of upgrades on what I initially thought was going to be a very iterative update. I mostly love the 2x zoom enhancement, as it's my most used zoom, kind of reflecting what I see most accurately. Are these upgrades worth it if you already have a 6 Pro? Probably not, especially if you don't zoom all that much, but you did pick the Pro and the zoom is pretty fun. Honestly, most shots you won't notice the quality difference when viewing on a phone or tablet, needing to get a bit closer to see it. And for that use case, the 6 Pro already takes some excellent shots that pop. Cheers for watching guys. If you found this helpful, a like would really go a long way. And if you're interested in random tech thoughts, why not check me out on Twitter? Otherwise, until next time, take it easy, stay casual.